In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. 
When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, a wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Responsorial Psalm. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence, Love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, before we begin the homily, I just wanted to just give a little quick brief notice. Um, some of you may remember um, a gentleman that would 
uh, would worship here from time to time named John Cullen. Um, and Mr. Cullen passed away on, on Friday at the age of 78, and um, it's kind of, um, the, the funeral arrangements haven't been able to be sorted out yet, but for various reasons, we're going to offer a mass here, a memorial mass for him tomorrow at, at 1 p.m. So if any of you knew him um, and would like to be a part of that, um, that's what the plan is tomorrow at 1 p.m. for John Cullen. Now, our gospel lesson today is usually read in the sense of the need for us to seek reconciliation. So suppose somebody has done something wrong to you. Jesus calls us to work toward reconciliation toward that individual. And he gives a method to help us to be reconciled to our brethren in this gospel lesson. And later on in Matthew chapter 18, St. Peter asks the Lord, after he's heard the Lord speaking about the need to forgive others, he says, well, how many times must I forgive? Seven times? No, Jesus replies, but 70 times seven. Many years ago when I was um, a uh, pastor in Fort Worth, Texas, I preached on this text and I said 70 times seven, that's 490. And this gentleman came up to me afterward and said about his marriage, we're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the point of course is that the Lord is saying an infinite number of times. We just, we, are obligated always to forgive. The spirit of forgiveness, therefore, must be in the heart of every Christian person. So that's the usual way that people read this verse of scripture, this text. But the church has read this passage in another sense, too. Um, and it perhaps follows a little bit more closely in the parallel passage in Luke chapter 17. And we might put it under the heading of fraternal correction. That is, it is our solemn obligation to look after each other, to watch out for each other, just like observant sheep in the pasture who keep watch that no one in the herd might wander off into danger. It is false kindness to refrain from correcting a brother who whether he knows it or not, has fallen into sin. Discipline is an essential quality, an essential responsibility of family life. It's not just discipline from mom and dad, but in a healthy family, the brothers and the sisters pitch in as well to help hold each other person in the family accountable. And God corrects his children so that they might always remain true members of his family. And we do have a solemn obligation to give these warnings when people fall into sin. It is as the Lord told the prophet Ezekiel in our first reading today, you must warn the people. If they are doing something against what I command, you must warn them. Otherwise, it will be on your head as well. Now, this text is hardly ever addressed. And I think perhaps one reason why is that we live in a mind-your-own-business culture. We're perhaps conditioned to think of the church as an association of private and autonomous individuals who just happen to gather together on Sunday to worship. And that our personal lives, what we think and what we say and what we do, this belongs to us alone. This is our personal private life. But this is not how Christ constituted his church. He lays on each one of us the solemn duty 
of correcting our brothers and sisters who have, may have fallen into sin. And he prescribes in this reading as a solemn command to follow this three-step process to bring these souls safely home to the church's communion. The first step, if you see someone in the family of faith that has fallen into sin, fallen into serious sin, not venial sin, but mortal sin, whether he knows it or not, you should go to that person alone, privately, so that you can avoid any public humiliation or embarrassment that would make it harder for that proud soul to repent. And then Jesus says the second step is if this doesn't work, then turn up the heat. Take one or two witnesses with you to emphasize the seriousness of the situation. And if this too fails and the matter could become a scandal for the church, then you must bring the matter before the church's leaders, especially the bishops, whom Christ gives power to absolve sin, but they also have power to excommunicate, to remove people from the fellowship of the church. This process demands a great deal of prudence and discretion. As Paul says, says in Galatians chapter 6, we must do so with a gentle spirit, but do so we must. Do so we must that others not fall away. If it should be done in charity, it should not be judged. Um, we shouldn't go and do it in a judgmental sort of way or with our noses kind of up in the air. We do so in humility because we know that we are sinners. We too are sinners. And so we approach a person who has fallen into sin with that love and that respect that we need to have that will help open the door. And if in your discernment, your intervention in that situation would make things only worse, then the church says that we might prudently step back and not confront the sinner, but pray earnestly for him. Because the goal is not to condemn the sinner, but to bring him or her back to the right faith and the right life. And remember that God has given us a promise if we bring back a brother that has fallen away, that brings forgiveness to us as well. We must bear in mind that we too are sinners, so anything we say and do in this thing will be done with humility. If we fail to correct our brother or our sister, it could become a scandal for the community of faith. I mean, the most obvious example is the one that weighs most heavily on, on my heart as a priest. For a long time, priests did nothing about the misconduct that was going on amongst their confreres. They knew about it. It was an open secret in seminary life and later on in priestly life that Certain priests or certain bishops were behaving in a way that was, was completely contrary to the commandments of Christ. And yet, perhaps out of fear, they didn't say anything. And then it just kind of builds up and it gets worse. And if people would have had the courage to do what Jesus says in this reading, when it first came to mind, when they first realized what was going on, perhaps the church would have been spared so much of the humiliation that we've gone through in recent years. You know, um, for a priest to say something 
against another, especially another priest, brother priest, that's a, it's a big deal. Priests like to be liked by people. That's one thing I, I learned the hard way when I started my ministry. Um, you want to be loved by the people in your parish, but sometimes that's not what is needed. What is needed is a priest that will preach the truth and will be courageous to call people out when they're failing, whether they know it or not, but that they will know it. This vocation is laid on all of the faithful, not just the clergy. Every one of us has an obligation um, to, to help um, keep discipline within the flock. Thus we preserve the church as a fellowship of love that Christ commands. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing when it happens. Sometimes it doesn't work so well and we get labeled as, you know, meddlesome. But if in our heart we are doing what we sense the Lord is calling us to do in terms of holding our brothers and sisters accountable, um, we are serving the will of Christ here and we help to build up his body, the church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We come and worship before the Lord who made us, offering the Father all our needs. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may they who labor to faithfully share the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the world's policymakers will approach their mission with mindfulness of the need for global peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who suffered painful loss in the events of September 11th, may they find comfort in the promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who labor in unhealthy and life-threatening situations, may employers strive to improve their workers' conditions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all workers in the vineyard of the Lord, May they find joy and fulfillment in their calling. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, in your great mercy, hear our prayers and hold us close through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who gives us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, Becket, our pastor, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourselves all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not for those who say the word. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
And we pray the prayer after communion found on the card in your pew. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow, and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.